everybody. Welcome to the second video in our Purpose and Vision series. Now, usually these videos would be filmed in our YouTube studio, but yet again, I'm up and down the country. So I started off in our first video saying that to begin looking at purpose and vision, we first of all have to begin looking at our worth. You see, God made the world, and I don't believe it's any mistake that the first story in the book of Genesis is all about our worth. It's about creation. But it's about how God made the world. He made a garden within that world after the world had become void and empty because the word in the Hebrew is that the world became void. It became empty. Something bad happened and God then makes this garden. He makes this garden with a wall around it to protect that that he's gonna put in that garden. In Ephesians, it actually says that God thought about us before he made the world. So the world was made for us, not us for the world. It wasn't that he made the world and then went, oh, I need something to put in it, I'm gonna make humans. No, he thought of us and thought, I need somewhere for them to live. I'm gonna make the world. It, it was all for us. So, it being all for us, God makes the world. He says, that's good, that's good, that's good. The stars, the birds, the flowers, the sea. He separates the sea, separates the dry land, he makes day, he makes night, and after every single day he says, that's good, that's good, that's good. But then he gets to the point that he wanted to get to, which was making humanity. And after he's made man and woman, he says, that's very good. I spoke in the first video about how he made them exactly as he needed them for that time. A bit like Esther, where it says, you were born for such a time as this. He needed a man that would be attracted to a woman to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So he made a man and a woman to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. We know that Adam was attracted to Eve because he said, that's bone of my bone, that's flesh of my flesh. Even in the wording, you can see he's saying, she belongs with me. We're right for one another. Now that doesn't mean that God wants us to just find any man or find any woman. It doesn't mean that everybody has to marry a man, and everybody has to marry a woman. It means that God is a purposeful God. He's a God of order. It says in the New Testament, God is not a God of disorder, but order. He makes people and things exactly for the purpose that they are meant to be for. He designs us to do something. My brother is a fabulous singer and he gets so much joy in singing. I have a friend who's a great craftsman and he gets so much joy in all different kinds of crafts from building to decorating to mechanics. He is at his best when he's doing what he loves and it's as if his whole body was designed to do that. There's a man in the Old Testament who was, was born and designed just to make the temple and the Spirit of God came upon him to do that. So I said in the first video we must find out what our strengths are. What are we good at? What were we made for? What are our abilities? Now, somebody commented on that video and said, are we not meant to live a sacrificial life? And I saw it and I thought, yes, that's the second video. The second video is about when we take what we have and we say, God, you gave this to me and I want to use it as you intended it to be used. In Romans, it says, present your body as a living sacrifice to God. Now, so often in the church, I think there has been a tradition or a tendency to see humanity as rubbish without God, worthless, dirty sinners. And yes, sin is terrible. Sin takes away your worth. It takes from you what God made you to be. But sin and you can be separated. And Jesus came to destroy all the works of the evil one and the works of the evil one began for us when he came into Eden and tempted us to do what God said not to do. Because of that, we received sin. But sin is not part of me. Sin affects me. I inherit sin, but I am meant to be something without sin. That's what I was born for. And in Christ Jesus, that's not only how he sees me, but he also can separate me from my sin, which is why I can return to how he wants me to be. I can repent. I'm always going to be troubled by sin on this earth. And Paul said, if you say you have no sin, you are a liar. But he also said, my grace is sufficient for you. He said God has a purpose for us and he will not stop until he completes that which he sent his word for. So in today's video, I want you to go back and look at video one. Look at all of your strengths. Look at the things you enjoy and thank God for them. Say, God, these things are very good and you've given them to me. But Eve had a choice. She could choose to eat that fruit and turn her back on God, say, I don't want your word on this subject, I'm choosing that, that's the way I'm going. 
Or she could say, God, what do you think of this? She chose to say, don't want God, I'm doing this, I'm not consulting God. But you today have a choice to say, this is who I am. This is what I'm good at. But God, I want to choose you. I want your spirit to come back into the situation. I want you to direct me what I'm meant to do with the gifts and the talents that you have given me. So I sacrificially give them back to you because you have said, I am very good. Jesus said before he left this earth, glorify me, Father, that I may glorify you and that they, my followers, may see your glory. And that's a prayer that I want to pray every day. Lord, glorify me. Let all of the glory that you have made me to be become, happen, be seen. Take away all of the sin that hinders your glory being seen so that I can glorify you because it's all about your glory and others can see your glory. You're glorious, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Just lastly, I want to give two more illustrations from scripture as to why this is so important. When God gave Moses a job to do, he said, Moses, go and say, let my people go. Moses says, no, no, I can't. My mouth isn't good enough, I'm slow of speech. God says, Moses, go. Moses says, no, no, I'm slow of speech. Send Aaron. God says, Moses, go. Moses says, no, send someone else. God gets angry. He gets angry not because Moses is disobeying, but because Moses is not believing in who God made him to be. And it's God with us, Emmanuel, Christ in me, the hope of glory. When God tells me to do something and I go, no, 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 I can't. It's not that I don't just believe in myself. I don't believe in him. I don't believe that he has the power to help me to do that which he has made me to do. I don't believe that I'm good enough and I'm the works of his hand. I don't believe that he can separate me from my insecurities or my sin. I'm the works of his hand and he is present in my life. Gideon is hiding food in a wine press and an angel comes along. He says, oh, you're a mighty warrior. Gideon's like, oh, why are you calling me that? No, 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 I'm not, I'm not. And then he says, okay, I'm gonna set a fleece so you can prove to me that God is telling me to do this thing. He goes through setting this fleece when he could have been getting on with what God wanted him to do. Again, he didn't know his worth. He didn't know how good he was. God didn't come along and go, you wicked, horrible sinner. You're worthless, you're frightened, you're afraid, you're no good. But if you trust in me, I will do things through you. He comes along and goes, you're a warrior. He went to Moses and he said, do you know what? You're my redeemer. You're gonna set the people of Israel free with me. And you, you looking at this video right now, you have a purpose, you have talents, you have tremendous worth and tremendous value. You are a work of his hands and there is a lot that is good about you. There are things that will stick to you like sin and when we allow them to label us, God comes along and he says, I wanna take that label off of you because you are my child. So if you have sin, if you have shame, if you have something sticking to you which is not from God, then say to it, take your hands off of me. I'm a child of the King. Today, name the things he's given you Thank him for the things he's given you and give them back to your relationship with him. Say, Lord, I'll be obedient. I want to live my life for you and do what will give you joy with him. I'll see you in the next video.